ability for him to stop doing that to any others. Because what he put me through is for life. As you can see, 2021, every time I remember the memories, I cry. I get triggered. The only difference was whether or not I could function. And after oh. the incident, I'm sorry. I how are you? But how are you doing now? I can function. But it doesn't change the fact that the triggers are still there. The memories are still there. The pain is still there. And I'm so scared because he's free that he can do it to someone else. You said you're. I don't want him to do it. I'm sorry, you said your family was against you going forward or is still against you going forward? Yeah, they want me to drop the case. Because of the shame? Yeah. What do your fiancé think though? He asked me to go forward. He says we need to hold him accountable for what he's done. So he believes you? Yep. See, the thing about in Singapore is the, this concept of faith is very important. When you do really, really well, they're proud of you. But such cases like that, you're coming out, talk about what happened to you, is not glorified. Seen as a shame. You don't want me to talk about it. We don't openly speak about sexuality. You cannot talk about rape in media because those are all taboo topics. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to report on it. Have you contacted the press in Australia? Not yet. Are you going to? I do hope to. Because the Australian police did not do their due diligence. How long How long do you think it took the police to um, let um, Mr. Stevens go? Well, you can count the timeline. Case happened 12 November 2019. A decision to not charge, 19 January, 2021. During which I told the police, I'm appealing it. I'm appealing a decision to not charge. And did, did they give you a reason why they were not charging him? <sighs> yes. What did they because say? Because they need to prove, prove three points in order to win the case in order to charge him. An intercourse happened. They have no doubt about that. I did not consent. They have no doubt about that. That's the third point. They cannot, they don't have enough evidence to prove that he doesn't know I didn't consent. Even if I said no, he claims he doesn't know that I didn't consent. 
That's what the police said, or or you heard him, or you saw his statement that, or you know that's a part of his statement. That was what the police said during a phone call I had with them when I wanted to tell them to appeal that charge. So the police believed me and they said that there is a difference between believing me that it happened and not believing me. They believed I did not consent. But the problem it's because Australia works on a jury system, which will usually be made of middle-aged guys, men. And they cannot have enough evidence to convince the jury that he doesn't know I didn't consent. is why they let him go. In his statement, he said there were cameras um, around the building. Can you speak on that? Trust me, if indeed there were cameras, I would have used that to prove my rape. There wasn't any cameras, no CCTVs, nothing. I would have wanted to use it as evidence. I wanted to use it as evidence. I how, ask. How would you though? Be because you were in the room. So how would you use it as an evidence? As a part of your evidence? Well, if you were to think of it, it wouldn't have shown anything except what intercourse happened. Right? But how would it if it were if the cameras were outside? How would it what? Sorry? No, you said the cameras, there were cameras around the building. I don't know what, what, what was the significance of him talking about the cameras. So Not that's what I'm asking you. How would it have helped you or him if there were cameras? Honestly, none. So I'm telling you that was what I initially wanted to do. But then when I spoke to the lawyers, they told me it's a non issue. It wouldn't have proved anything. What do you wanted to do? What he wanted to do? No, what you wanted to do. What you were going to do. There were no cameras. Oh, we'll your, lawyer, your lawyer said if there were cameras, it would, it would have assisted in your case, right? No. No. Cameras wouldn't have mattered. Right, right, right. But I didn't know. I was just trying to fight the case in whatever method I think I, I can logically. But then, then they told me, it doesn't matter. Because again, you have to remember, the police believes me. There was an intercourse. You just cannot convince the jury of 12, made up of middle-aged men, that he believes I didn't consent. The issue surrounds consent. And that's what makes it so difficult. It's not as simple as there was no penetration and I'm making up lies. Right. What would you want to say to Richard now if he's watching? I'm going to say that I trusted you to at least tell the truth as some decency. But now I know you're someone with no heart and no conscience. And before you just keep lying, remember this. When the facts come out and they are proof, you will just be hitting yourself on the foot.
You broke up a little I, bit. You want to say that again? <clears throat> when the facts come out, all these things, things here that I've said today, and there are proofs of my fact, you will just be hitting yourself on the foot. Do you think they will ever come? That they will ever come? Do you think that will happen? Do you think there is way for you to prove your point or prove that you were you were telling the truth? Yes. Are you are you trying to appeal the case at this point? I'm still trying to fight the case. My lawyers are still working on the case. They're still chasing the persons, the prosecutors who independently in, reviewed it. To give me an answer. To explain to us what's the rationale. To and explain your, to us why. And your fiance is supporting you in this cause, right? Yes. Would you like me to speak to him? What? Can I speak to him? Can I bring him on? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, Mr. Vegas. Hey, Zach. Hey, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for um, the invite, for accepting the invitation. No problem. The truth needs to be spoken. The truth needs to be said. And I do support Elaine, no matter what it is. Okay? Unfortunately, I saw some of the comments and, and some of them saying that Elaine is only telling it out to keep me. No. I'll stay with her regardless, irregardless of whether she wants to say the truth or not. But if she wants to fight it, I will fight it. And I'll be right in front with her. I'm sorry, I'm a bit emotional about this. But How does you feel when someone says she's, staying be she's doing it because she wants you to stay with her? How that makes you feel? That's angry. It's clear that some people don't understand how a relationship truly works and whether that person truly loves that person or not. That's what it is. That's that's what it shows to me. But it's fine. To each his own opinion. So be it. But what I want is the truth to be out. I want justice for what happened to my fiance, my partner, my wife, the person that I trust the rest of my life with and I want to spend the rest of my life with. I want justice for her. What, yeah. when, the, when you saw uh, Mr. Stevens um, Tried to kiss her or kissed her. What? What? Can you speak to me on that? I was held back by two of the technical crew and one of the waiters at the VIP area. The curtain was slightly ajar. The dance floor could see exactly what he did. As I went back, because I'm a technical guy, I was there to help to make sure that Richie actually had a stage to make him look grand for everybody. So when I, yeah. I'm sorry. So uh, how did that, explain to me how how we got to that point where we just tried to kiss her. Explain, what, what happened before? He was Were doing a show, it was Were, a good show. Was he I made sure this. I'm sorry. sorry? Was, was he having a conversation with Elaine? Um, no. What, so he was taking moment. videos for him to make sure that he has a show reel that shows to his, shows to his, his Jamaican people and his Jamaican cloud that he did a show in one of the biggest clubs in Singapore. I assisted to be to, to become his private security in the VIP so that nobody will bother Mr. Stevenson. I made sure of that. And yet, at the end of the night, when we are all packing it up, 
with the VIP cut them just slightly ajar. I saw them. I saw him grabbing onto her, putting her lips on her. She's trying to struggle out, and I tried to run over. By the time I got to the VIP, people was pulling me back because she says, if you hit somebody international here in Sela V, guess what? I'm a minority in Singapore. I'm Indonesian. I'm Malay. I'm a minority. Guess who gets into trouble? Me. Right? Not Mr. Stevenson. I'm the one who gets into trouble. Help me back. Two days later, I went back to get my stage that I loaned for Mr. Richie Stevenson. And I asked individually every one of them, did you see that? They confirmed it. They feel bad about it. See, that's when I really, I, I lost my first, that's the first time I lost trust for Richie. And this is where the predator side of things happen. I believe it's a predator side of things happen. Started, you know, communicating back to normal. He apologized for what he did. He said he was drunk. That's why he did it. I call BS to that. I apologize. I really do. He apologized. We had a few conversations. Me, Elaine, and him had a few conversations. He worked hard to gain back my, my, my trust, the trust of the family. He apologized profusely over and over again. And me, you know, I'm, I'm a very simple man. Okay, if the women that I trust and I care for, my family, trust this man again, and they feel like he has apologized enough and he's sorry about it, I will trust them. I'm not a smart man. I'm physically strong, but that's about it. I'm a simple man. I work my ass off to do whatever I need to do to make sure that everybody's shows run well whenever they are here in Singapore. I even got a message from his former tour manager, no less, at that point in time when he first was there. So imagine this, Mr. Vegas. I just, I just want to paint something, okay? You're back in Malaysia and in Singapore. Okay. Right now I'm in Singapore. But as you as you're at home, every day the person that you love, that you're with, your partner, contacts you every day and then suddenly she disappears for two days straight. Right? And then I finally, finally got through. And that's when I found out what happened. After thorough digging, digging and digging and digging, that's when I found out About what, what happened? had happened. Yes. She didn't want you to know? She says, what she told me, she felt ashamed. And I don't blame her. Right. She felt that shame and she felt like she betrayed me. She felt like she cheated on me. After 14 years. Okay? And I honestly don't blame her. I don't blame her at all. Did she blame herself? Yes, she did. Every night. Okay, here's another thing. Let me paint this for you. When she came back, she finally came back. Our first night back in JBI in our own house, in our own bed. All right? After once again, bawling, crying in the shower. I had to pick her up, clean her up, right her to bed. She finally got to sleep. I wanted to hug her to sleep, but she didn't want it. She just wanted my arm underneath her head. Fair enough. I let it be. I give her some space. 
I under I fully understand. And then she started mumbling this. She started sleep talking. <laughs> okay. I'm dirty. And nobody wants me. Can you imagine the kind of psychological psychological torture that you had to go through that by the time you go to sleep, that's what you're mumbling to yourself? For a good six months that I was there until I had to go con until I was contracted back to Singapore, till I am now. She was mumbling then in her sleep. Any guy out there in the comments, even to you, Mr. Vegas, imagine that. The person that you love, that you really feel that like you couldn't protect, is mumbling that in her sleep. How would you feel? How would you feel? Your daughter, your mom, your own wife, anybody. Ah. Sorry, can I smoke on this? Is that okay, Mr. Vegas? You're doing good, man. Speak, man. May, may I smoke? You can do what you want to do, brother. All right, thank you. But imagine that, okay? Just imagine that. Six months. She said that over and over again. I had a hold it in myself. Hold it within myself. Not to get angry because the person that she needs now is somebody to support her, to be able to carry her and help her whenever is needed. Imagine that pain, huh? Seriously, imagine that pain. When you try to kiss her, did she um go to um was that before she went to Jamaica? Way before. That was the first time, the first time ever he came here. We so were in a big big Yeah, it was the first time. So she went to Jamaica. I was the second time was in Jamaica. That's when after that was after C'est la vie, yes. Because did again, she tell, did she tell you what happened in Jamaica that he tried to kiss her again in Jamaica? Unfortunately, no. Because I know why, and and I know why she didn't tell me because she felt ashamed. She didn't want me to get angry. Trust me, if I bring you right now to my room, the amount of holes that I have in that room, just because when I was angry. They say a good man has a lot of rules in his life to make sure that he doesn't do anything. I keep it within that room. She doesn't want me to react like that. She doesn't want me, because I was not there. I was running our school, the businesses here in Singapore. Okay. Why did you allow her to go to Australia with him? Why? Because he earned my trust and I didn't even know what happened in Jamaica, unfortunately. Hmm. All right. Were you were you against her going with him after you saw what happened with the kiss? In Australia it, when it was time in Singapore? Yeah. Initially I was. Of course I was. All right, of course I was. Why wouldn't I be? But that's when he's, he had conversations with me and Major. He was apologizing to me, Major, Elaine, all together. His tour manager, his former tour manager, was apologizing to us, short to near getting on their knees and apologizing. So you believed he was sincere? Of course. Because then I'm a simple man. I'm not a smart man. I'm just simple. I'm a simple man, and unfortunately, at that point in time, a naive man as well. 
I shouldn't have let that happen. I should have done something to, to reach you the first time around. I saw that. Let's put it that way. Are you getting some counseling yourself? I am. I've been, I'm on life, I've been on counseling. I'm a former survivor myself. Let's be honest here, okay? That's why I know how Elaine feels. I truly know. That's the only part that I actually got strength from because I am a former survivor myself. Because I knew what she needed. I'm on regular counseling. Yes, I am. I'm on medication too. But that's it. But that's normal for me. That's my life. That's my past. You think that gives you strength to stay by your side? That gives me strength not to want to do worse things to Mr. Stevenson. I'll put that as that. I'll leave it as that. Well, what do you want to say to him, to Mr. Stevens, if he's watching? Honestly, if he's watching this, and I'm staring right at the camera, just in case, so that everybody can see my eyes, and he can see my eyes, I pity you. I don't hate you, but I pity you. Why I pity you? I pity your family. I pity the island that you live in because they are hiding somebody who's a predator. That is willing to do the most heinous act even death cannot cleanse away from your soul. Mr. Richard Stevenson, if you can hear this, I pity that you are around. I pity the island that you are on. Because they have to live around you. And the sheer fact that you could do this again.